Welcome to the topic of hierarchical data structures for big data visualization. Previously, I mentioned that one way to address the big data problem is to use multi-resolution data created from hierarchical data structures. So basically, the idea is that for data that are considered important, you use higher resolution, but for data that are not as important, you can reduce the resolution to decrease the memory space requirement and also to increase the computational efficiency. So now let me give you an example. In the diagram below, initially we have a A by A by A volume data. Now you can average every two by two by two voxels and then store only the average value, create a low resolution data that has resolutions of four by four by four. Then you can further average the 2x2x2 two by two by two voxel at low resolution and create a even lower resolution data. In the example here, we come to 2x2x2, two by two by two, which only takes up up to 1 64th of the space compared to the raw data. Because less data are required, you are able to minimize the space cost. And also, if you are going to perform utilization computation, the amount of computation is also reduced. So how do we construct such a hierarchical volume data? One popular method is to use Arctree. Arctree is a hierarchical spatial subdivision scheme, which has a wide range of application. So here and now, let me focus on the general concept of Arctree. Remember, Arctree is a spatial subdivision scheme that is performed hierarchically. So starting from the entire domain, you subdivide the axis of each dimension in half. For three-dimensional space, this will give you A subdomains or A octants. Now, assuming you want to continue to subdivide, for each octant, you can perform the same process and further subdivide into A more subdomains. You apply this similarly to all the octants. Here, I only show the subdivision for one octant. You repeatedly apply the same subdivision recursively until you reach a unit space that you do not want to further subdivide. For example, when you reach to a voxel, then you are not going to create any subvoxel subdivision, then you stop here. And this will give you a complete arc tree. The leaf node of arc tree is the original raw data points and then the root of the whole subtree is one single node that represents the entire domain. So it depends on how you subdivide it, an octree can be full or non-full. Full means every parent has exactly eight children. That is, each dimension has enough length that allows you to subdivide. Given a three-dimensional biometric data represent a 3D array, this means all the dimensions have the same length and they are power of two. As an example, a volumetric data that has 16 by 16 by 16 voxels, you can subdivide in the first level to 8 of A by A subvolume. And then for each of the subvolume, you can further divide. So the second level, each node, you can further divide into 8 4 by 4 by 4 voxels. And the next level for each node, you can divide into 8 of 2 by 2 by voxels. And then you further divide in the last level, you can divide into eight or one by one by one, that is one voxel. So this is an example of full arc tree because at every level, you are able to divide each dimension into two halves. And we have four levels here for this 16 cube voxel example. One thing that is often interesting to people is that how many nodes it is required to store the entire arc tree because the storage for the nodes represent the overhead. Assume you have full arc tree and at every level you generate a additional children. So the first level is going to give you a to the power of zero, that is one node. The next level you create a sub nodes and for each sub node you create a additional children. So you can imagine this is a exponential series and the total number of nodes is s to the power of 3 minus 1 divided by 7. Here, the s is the length of the volume along each dimension. Because the original size of data is s times s times s, that is the total number of data elements. And the number of nodes in this arc tree is s cubed minus 1 divided by 3. 
So we can calculate the node to data ratio, and this will give you 0.1428, which is the optimal ratio. But optimal means that the volume can be represented by a full arc tree, and the ratio is minimal. If a volume cannot be represented by a full arc tree, the node to data ratio is going to increase. This implies overhead is going to increase. I want you to pause here to think about why a full arc tree will give you the optimal node to data ratio, and if any dimension is not sufficient for you to further subdivide, the node to the ratio is going to increase. Having a full arc tree will provide you with some advantages. One advantage is that you can store the tree in a linear array and index any of the nodes without having to use pointers. Assuming you store the tree in a breadth-first traversal order, that is, all the nodes at the same level are stored in a contiguous memory space, and because it's a full arc tree, every node will have exact A children. So assuming a parent node is stored at array T with index K, where the K is the level of the parent node, in the root, the k is equal to 0, and the next level is 1, and so on and so forth. If the root is at t of k, then its a children nodes, you can locate them at t of ak plus 1, t of ak plus 2, etc., all the way to t of ak plus a. So in other words, if you have a full arc tree, you can store the tree node in its 1D array, and you can very easily identify the location of each node without using any pointers. So while full arc trees have many advantages, unfortunately, most of the data volume, they do not have dimensions that have equal size, and also the size being part of a two. So as a result, we don't always get full arc tree created. Take an example of this volume data that has resolutions of 16 by 8 by 4 here. So the first level, we can subdivide each dimension in half with no problem. This will give us A nodes, and each node has a size of 8 by 4 by 2. And for each of the nodes here, we can perform further subdivision. That will also give us 8 children, and each child has 4 by 2 by 1 resolution. Now, at this level, if you want to perform further subdivision, as you can see, the last dimension only has a size of 1, so we cannot further subdivide it. So what we are going to do is we only can subdivide the first and the second dimensions that will produce four subnodes. Each node has 2 by 1 by 1 resolution. At this level, because the second and the third dimensions only have one voxel, we cannot subdivide anymore. So we can only subdivide the first dimension into two halves. So this will give you only two nodes. Each node has one by one by one voxel. If you calculate the total number of nodes, the root has one. The next level, level one, has a nodes. And the level two has a times a. The next level, a times a times four. And the final level, a times a times four times two. This will give you a total of 841 nodes. If you try to calculate a node to data ratio, the original size of data is 16 by 8 by 4. This will give you 512. So the ratio is 841 divided by 512. This is definitely greater than the optimal ratio, that is 0.14. And in addition to that, we have higher node to data ratio, which means larger overhead, because each node doesn't always have a children. It's difficult to predict the position of the child nodes, so we have to store pointers that will represent additional space overhead. Let me introduce another implementation of ArcTree. This is called branch on the ArcTree. This is a top-down implementation of ArcTree subdivision that can reduce the space overhead. Essentially, what we are going to do is, given a volume that does not have power over two size in each dimension, we are going to perform a partition with an imaginary volume, which you can consider as padding zeros to the actual data to make it power of a 2. Although you don't actually pad the volume with zeros, you just subdivide the data based on the size of the imaginary volume. So let me give you an example. Assuming you have 2D data with 5x5 voxels, because 5 is not a power of a 2, 
what we are going to do is we are going to extend the size of the data along each dimension to make it A by A. The black ovals here are the actual data elements and the white ovals are the additional space for this imaginary data. Now we have A by A data elements in each dimension and we can perform the regular actual subdivision. The first cut is going to cut in the middle of the A, divide the data into two halves and the dimension of each half is 4. And we can continue to do this. So we always partition the data based on the imaginary size. So the next subdivision is going to use this yellow line, which will subdivide the 4 by 4 subvolume into additional 2 by 2. When you encounter a subspace that has no black oval, which means you don't have any real data, you stop the subdivision. So this diagram at the bottom shows the result. So initially we have one node, and uh, after we pad this imaginary zero, we subdivide the data into four blue nodes, each of it has an imaginary size of a four by four. And then you continue to subdivide based on this imaginary data size. You stop subdivision when the data in your current node are all imaginary. So what's the advantage of this branch on the arc tree? It will allow more A-way branches toward the leaf node of the tree. So because of that, it will require a smaller number of tree nodes. And I'd like you to pause here and think about why this is true. So now let's talk about how the arc trees can benefit visualization algorithm. Assuming we are using this branch on the arc tree for isosurface extraction, what you can do is remember our domain subdivision strategy for isosurface search. At every level, at the root node, you can store the mean and max value. And then for ISO value that the user want to compute ISO surface out of it, you check the mean max value at each domain or subdomain. If the mean max value interval does not contain the ISO value, you can be sure that ISO surface is not going to intersect with the domain. So you can skip searching the data element within the domain completely. Another application of Arctree is to perform volume rendering. What you can do is, for every node, you store the mean value of all the original voxels within. Alternatively, also each tree node, you can store a sub-value of reduced resolution. At each tree node, you compare the data value of the reduced resolution with the raw resolution in the same space. That is, you compare the raw data value with the average data value in the space and store the room in square. So this is the process to create the actual for one data. So the leaf level of the tree store the raw data. The internal nodes store the average value for all the voxels that are contained within a space. This means the internal nodes store data of reduced resolution or downsample data. At every internal node, you compute error metric, for example, using the room mean square. Now, when you want to perform volume rendering, the user will specify the tolerance, that is how much error is allowed at each node. Then you start to search from the root. If the root, for example, the error is too high, you go down to A of the children. Here I use 2D as an example, so you, you only show four children. Then you compare the error tolerance with the error metric stored at each child node. If the error stored in the child node is lower than the error tolerance, then you use the reduced resolution there. For example, the red box. We don't have to continue the search because here the errors stored in the red node are already smaller than the error tolerance. But the remaining two white box we assume the error is still too high, so then we go down to their child nodes. And here we stop at the raw data at the bottom level. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the combination of the data at different resolution to perform one rendering because they occupy different space in the volume. So the rendering result can be combined together and generate a final image. And this is how Arctree can be used to partition your data into different chunks, and then based on the error, you can assign different resolution to it. When you perform one rendering, you can use different resolutions at different locations to reduce the space and the computation overhead. And this is one example of multi-resolution volume rendering based on Arctree.
the leftmost image is generating it from low resolution volume. As you can see, the image here is blurred and some features are not so clearly visible. And the image on the right is produced using the raw data resolution. So this is the basic trade-off because when you use low resolution data, the computation can be done much more efficiently. And then you only need to bring in small amount of data. The raw data that is the highest resolution will produce image of best quality at the cost of slower speed and more data are needed. Okay, so this concludes the lecture on hierarchical data structures for big data visualization.